Now, obviously, I'm going to keep it 100, as I always do, and say that that performance against Liverpool yesterday at Anfield was nothing short of dreadful. Chelsea travel to Anfield and lose 4-1. Could have been more. Let's get into it. And blue is the colour. Greetings! Welcome back to Couch Critic with me, Dennis P, for what is your Chelsea match review, but more specifically, a tactical synopsis of Chelsea's performance, or lack thereof, against Liverpool at Anfield. But before we get into all of that, please do me the favor. I need you guys to help me grow this channel. The way I know how to do it is by you guys hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe button, hit the bell for notification if you haven't already. It'll help me and it'll help my sponsors who go by the name of Major League Socks. And fellas, if you ever want to walk in the footsteps of greatness, you know what to do. Hit them up. The link will be in the description. I'm just going to start by saying this. There is absolutely nothing retainable about that performance against Liverpool at Anfield yesterday. From minute one to minute 90, Liverpool battered us. Just a, an absolute drubbing. Like the 4-1 scoreline actually flattered us. I think that I thought that that game in, in particular could have been easy 6-7-8 you know, with the way that we played. And there's so many things that I just did not understand about how we set up and how we chose to play the game. You know, obviously when you're playing with a false nine, the idea there is to basically build from the back, you know, try and build your attack correctly and, you know, try and play through them, you know, keep the ball. And in every instance where Chelsea were on the pitch, they did the exact opposite. I mean, obviously Chelsea did not have a target man, so the very idea of trying to play a little bit more direct into, you know, basically into the clutches of, you know, Van Dijk and Konate was just never gonna work. And I couldn't understand how many times I saw Chelsea play long, go long, and were looking for outlet balls that we're just getting eaten up by the Liverpool defenders. You would have just expected Chelsea to be playing out from the back and setting themselves up accordingly, obviously to absorb pressure, the immense amount of pressure that Liverpool put on us, and also be able to have the numerical numbers to cope with the press. And we just saw the exact opposite from the beginning of the game right to the latter stages. And I mean, we're gonna get into it because there's a specific instances where I've kind of detailed in my, in my match review where you know, I just feel like we just got it completely wrong. And it starts, of course, with the management, but it also starts with just the execution from the players. Like, let's just jump right into it right here, guys. Like, obviously, this Liverpool press was very, very difficult to play through. Um, they put tons of pressure on our, you know, our releases and whatnot. The likes of Caicedo and Enzo and, you know, some, and to some certain degree, obviously, uh, Cole Palmer, who was dropping deep to play the, the false nine position. But the actual setup that we employed this game uh, to play out from the back was just completely wrong, completely wrong. And I think that Pochettino just did not make enough in-game tactical switches to deal with the onslaught of this press. Now, obviously, as you can see here, Liverpool are set up to take away the middle areas of the pitch. They want to keep the ball away from Moises Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez and put tons of pressure on our center backs, here being obviously Batty Ashil and Thiago Silva. The wide areas are where you expect Chelsea to have the most joy, where they're going to be able to get on the ball and do the most things. But in most cases, when you have a press se sequence, you're going to need the ball to come back infield at some point in order to accurately break the press. Once you break that first wave, you have to have that ball come back inside for them to effectively break the press. And Chelsea was just so poor the entire game at trying to, to make that incisive pass inward. I think it also comes down to the fact that when we're playing out from the back, you know, our keeper just refused to make that 35 yard pass out to the flanks to where, you know, our fullbacks were. You know, Desasi is in acres of space here. Like this is where the ball needs to be played. Once he draws the attention of Diaz here, you can then, you know, open up spaces for the likes of Caicedo. You can open up spaces for the likes of Cole Palmer to drop deep and collect. And that's how you start playing. You know, there's only been a few instances in this game where Chelsea accurately identified where the soft spots were and were effective at playing it back infield to break the press. And, you know, it just didn't happen enough. And credit to Liverpool. Obviously, their press was very, very you know, aggressive and they were very good at getting us in positions where our, you know, least gifted ball carriers were on the ball 
on constantly, constantly. And you know, when we did get the likes of Caicedo and we did get the likes of Enzo on the ball, they just got crowded out, you know? The spacing between the two midfielders was often like, you know, a chasm. And that to me just comes down to the setup. The manager just did not set up the team correctly to effectively break the press and keep our shape together. Like when you have distances of 10 to 15 yards between Moises Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez, you have problems. You actually have problems to break their press because effectively we're not tight enough we're not close enough there's no cohesion between the two of them to play through it like let's face it like our midfield is our strongest area on the pitch that is where we are press resistant you have to get these guys on the ball in order to break the press and i just thought we did a poor job of that throughout the entire match finding these guys in tandem together to give liverpool a little bit more to think about um, i mean obviously liverpool did play narrow and they did take away the spaces where you know you want to get moises caicedo and enzo fernandez on the ball but you know we just didn't recognize when we needed to go out wide in order to come back in and Every time we went out wide, it was either a turnover or we just tried to like hoof it up the pitch and hope that we can get runners in behind. And every time it just came right back at us. The timing of the releases of the ball, guys holding onto it too long and then just getting crowded out. All of that is just what you cannot have against a team that is effectively, you know, aggressively pressing you all over the pitch. Okay, so here what you clearly see is that Chelsea were effective in finally getting that ball infield to Moises Caicedo, who then shifts it out to Medweke. And, you know, the next action here, like, it's a simple pass into Cole Palmer, into space, and he plays it right to the defender. Like, just lazy passes every time we were trying to get that release foul to get us on the, on the counter. And it didn't just happen once or twice. It happened consistently throughout this game, just not recognizing where the next pass was when we actually break the first wave of that press. And here once again, Chelsea do a, get a good job of breaking the first wave. Enzo Fernandez with that line breaking pass into Connor Gallagher. And then the next actions from this guy just are just baffling to me. I just don't understand what he's trying to do here. He has two options here to release Chelsea into space and get us running at their defense with numbers. And the options that he takes here is to dribble back, to release the ball back into De Sassi and of course put you know the cat amongst the chickens again and it just doesn't make any sense to me like again as much as we were pressed effectively by liverpool and i can't take anything away from that like obviously the situations where we did break play through them and break them we were just poor in our decision making like this is an indictment right here obviously he has an option right here to either play it out to the very far flank where ben chilwell is in acres of space granted he didn't have a great game but he was in acres of space we break that press we are running with numbers here and then the option number two which is illustrated here is obviously he could have just played it right into cole palmer and it's the exact same result and he instead chooses to dribble back and release it back to de Sassi, and you know we're stuck we can't get out again you know, it's just these things, being unable to understand where we need to be to break the press. Under Those simple things that you need to do is just not being absorbed by players like Connor Gallagher, by players like Ben Chilwell and Medweke at times. It was just, it made no sense. And they all three of them are rightly subbed at half, but it doesn't just end there for me. There were just so many poor decisions in this game. I mean, right here is another example. Like, Chelsea have again effectively broken through the first and second wave of that press uh, Cole Palmer obviously Caicedo plays it into Cole Palmer who then lays it off to Medweke and look what's happening on the left side of the pitch here look what he has here he has a 3v1 with Connor Gallagher uh, Enzo Fernandez and Raheem Sterling all breaking into space and he decide he can't release the ball in time. He he loses control of the ball, doesn't play it advance it forward where we have a new numerical advantage and of course are breaking in with numbers here. He decides to dribble it back and then once you do that, you know, you obviously lose the opportunity to get numbers running running at them at numbers because now they're getting back into their shape now. Like obviously in this scenario here, you're looking on that left flanker and that Bradley kid is nowhere to be found. It's just Kanate who's actually defending that, that side of the pitch for them. And, 
You make that pass in that moment there, Chelsea are in. Chelsea are absolutely in with numbers once again. And it's just a recognition, man. Like we have so many guys that love to dwell on the ball and don't want to release it at the right times. And this is a perfect example of that. I just knew in the 10 to 15 minutes what Chelsea was going to show up. If we weren't going to be at it, if we weren't going to be like pressing them relentlessly, if we weren't going to be, you know, breaking through their press, keeping possession, showing composure, there was no way we we're going to have any foothold in this match. And it rang true. Now, Chelsea are not in any position where we can have any passengers on the pitch. We're just not good enough for that. Too young, too inexperienced to have anyone that's just kind of coasting through the match and not giving us 110% and being completely switched on all match. And, you know, to have your captain be your biggest offender in the first half of that game, to be have your captain, the guy that's wearing the armband, the extension of the manager on the pitch, be the poorest player contributor to Chelsea actually playing good football is just horrible like I thought Ben Chilwell was far and away the worst player on the pitch this entire first half I mean just look at this like these are situations where Chelsea should be you know finding the feet of their teammates with ease with effortless ease you know every time Ben Chilwell gets on the ball it's a turnover like I'm counted at least in that first half he turned over the ball four to five times where Chelsea were in the ascendancy or getting ready to break on you know Liverpool and as soon as it went to Ben Chilwell it was just a turnover or a, a misplaced pass you can't have this at this level when you're playing against a team like Liverpool you have to be a hundred percent a hundred percent switched on, dialed in, and playing your best football. There's no way that they're not going to expose, you know, weaknesses that, we, that Ben Chilwell has shown here, like his inaccuracy on the ball. You know, once they get on transition, you know what happens. And of course, the goal is a result of that. I mean, in this scenario here, obviously Liverpool are no longer pressing. You know, they got the goal. They're looking to hit us on the counter right now. But Chelsea effectively play through them. You know, played out to Chilwell, and he, you know, he basically does the right thing. He one touches it into Raheem Sterling, and instead of Raheem Sterling attacking the the defense here with his pace and whatnot, he decides to recycle possession. Like the decision making in this squad right now is just so poor, so so poor. When we get opportunities to get on the break and to like really hurt teams with numbers, just like bombing forward, we always choose to make the wrong decision. It's like we just don't understand that you know these these opportunities don't come along very often and when they do you have to pounce on them there's no other team that i can see in the premier league right now that just miss opportunities to get on the break as much as chelsea do like we should have been pushing as many people forward as possible at that point and looking to hurt them in the final third but you know the, the decision here is to recycle possession and it's not the first time we saw that today but to me the biggest issue in this game against liverpool yesterday was obviously their high press and our inability to tactically set up correctly to break through it. I mean, there were so many instances where Chelsea were basically playing a 4-3-3 with a single pivot and, you know, Caicedo being overrun by, you know, so many of that that compact midfield that uh, that Liverpool set up there and it just made no sense to me. Obviously, if you're going to build out from the back correctly, you need to have a pivot there. You need to actually have a double pivot there. You need to put your most talented ball carriers in positions where they can get on the ball and help play through this help play through this aggressive press and you know the very few occasions that Enzo does drop deep to help Caicedo is the opportunities where we actually got through their press I just couldn't understand why I'm seeing this and the manager is still going with single pivot when we can't get out like we have no way out so I'm hanging this one on Poch I'm hanging this one specifically on Poch because I feel like he just did not understand that tactically we were not set up to play through this press and if we're not set up to play through it and you want to go long, we don't have the personnel to deal with that. He never really made the adjustments to address what the game was asking for. And, you know, that to me is another indictment on the manager. You have to assess what's happening on the pitch and make the tactical adjustments to get us out of a really, really tough situation. And I just didn't see enough of that yesterday against Liverpool. Now, I'm not going to even entertain the idea of potch in, potch out. I just think that that's silly. Um, it's not really something that I get into myself um, far be it for me to tell anyone else how they feel or whatever that's fine with me but I'm not there but I'm s clearly seeing things that I just don't like in what is happening with our setup right now and what I would always say is 
if our manager cannot coax top performances or not put our best players, our most gifted players in positions to succeed, then he's not the right manager for us. I will say that. And this is another example where, you know, our best players are some of our worst performing players on the day. Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo did not have good games. You know, we are banking on that midfield pairing to be the saving grace for this team right now. We need those players to perform at an extremely high level for Chelsea to have any success in any game. You know, like that's just fundamental. And right now, from this game against Liverpool, which is a, obviously the highest end opponent you can face, maybe outside of Manchester City. And, you know, we just did not show up. We did not show up. And this, again, is an, an example of where the manager has not given the instructions to our best thinkers on the pitch to impact the game. Like, you know, you're going to hear a lot of people online talk about Enzo Fernandez's position on the pitch when Chelsea are in the second phase of their buildup and, you know, him being too high. I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily opposed to that because I think that we need to be able to put pressure, apply pressure on teams in the final third. But when you're not getting, you're not keeping the ball, you're not able to hold possession and whatnot, and you're getting countered at an alarming rate, you're giving away the ball in crucial positions, you have to make the adjustment and say, you know what, Enzo, I need you to fall back a little bit more to get on the ball a little bit more and, you know, orchestrate this for us. You know, get get us playing the football that we need to be playing. And then once we have some sort of like a chemistry and understanding of what it is we're trying to do, him being the offensive thinker, then you can start bombing forward and getting it closer to the box and whatnot and then, you know, threatening in those areas. But in circumstances where we do not have any control of the game and you have him, you know, 10, 15 yards away from Caicedo, it's just tactically inept to me. So he needs, he needs to fix up he needs a pattern up like big time in order for us to start seeing some real progression in this side but I do believe I'm gonna leave it right there guys just a horrible game I didn't even really get into the second half because by the time we got into the locker room it was a dead match anyways we just had nothing no influence you know obviously Nkunku comes on and scores again what he's got two goals in less than 90 minutes on the pitch like this guy's a killer we have to get this guy fit, keep him fit in order to see, you know, our best football. That much is certain. But, you know, the news today, Armando Bro going out in loan only says one thing to me. We need a striker in the worst way right now. So hopefully they're doing the right things in the transfer market. We can get somebody in just to get us to the summer because I don't think that we're going to be able to get in our bigger targets in at this point in time. But who knows? Maybe we can get somebody like, ugh, I don't even know, a Callum Wilson, maybe. I don't know, something like that just to help us you know, find the back of the net with a little bit more regularity, you know, somebody that can actually lead the line effectively, you know. I mean, a lot of people are going to be asking why we didn't play with Broha today, and I'm like, why? Like, he was horrible for, for weeks now. Like, you can't put him in when you know he's out of form in a situation where he's playing up against Van Dyke and Kanate at Anfield and expect to see anything but another poor performance. So, uh, you know, I thought he made the right decision there. It's like, pick your poison, either play with a you know, a misfiring, you know, completely out of sorts, you know, striker, recognized striker, or you play the false nine. But if you're going to play the false nine, you better better make sure that you're going to try and keep it on the carpet and like try and keep possession. And we just did not do that well enough today. So, you know, we have a lot of things to learn. The golfing class between us and Liverpool right now is a chasm. And we have to shore that up real, real soon because the Cowboy Cup Finals around the corner. And I want to win that. I don't know about you guys, but I want to win that. But until then, keep the blue flag flying high and up the Chelsea. Peace.